In this lesson, we're going to have a quick basic intro to LabVIEW. So I'm going to go to Spotlight and launch my LabVIEW. And uh, the purpose of this program will be to develop a sumo wrestling robot that is designed to stay within a black sphere and also we'll add some sensors on there to design it to automatically protect itself. So none of this is by remote control, it's all automated. Now before we start our program, we're going to take some direct readings from the EV brick uh, with respect to some of the sensors. Now if you flip through this menu over here, let's go to sensor 3, you'll notice that we have the light sensor and as I roll the robot over the off-whitish floor, we get a reading of light intensity in the 40s. When I roll it onto the black tape, it is below 10. Now remember these parameters because these are numeric constants that we will use in providing specificity within our program. Also if I flip over to input 4, we have the ultrasonic sensor which was put on the lower end of the robot and is kind of obstructed by this device over here but when we lift that I can move my hand forward and you'll notice as I approach my hand we get a closer reading in centimeters and when I move my hand away you see the distance increases. So when you get to this introductory screen, typically you'll go to Create Program, you'll go to Virtual Instruments, Blank Instrument, Create. And you'll get these two windows here. We don't need the front panel, which is uh, where the virtual instrument will have dials, knobs, and uh, live feedback, graphs, and things like that. And we're not going to be working with virtual instruments, per se, on this program. I'm going to maximize the block diagram window because this is where all of our programming is going to take place. Two palettes that we need to have open are the Tools palette and the Functions palette. Let me just close those for a second to show you where you can find them. Go here to your Functions palette and here to your Tools palette. And within the Functions palette you're going to notice you have a wide range of different operators and program operations that you can implement it, it, LabVIEW is very sophisticated. It is a top engineering platform uh, used widely throughout the world. But for the purposes of our project, we're going to use the Mindstorms Robotics menu. And I'm going to minimize the palette there. And so within this Mindstorms Robotic, we have two sets of icons, programming icons that we're going to use. The first one is within the programming family, and the second one is the I.O. family, the input-output. Uh, icons. So we're going to be focusing on those. Now to speed things up a bit, I've already created a Sumo program and I'm going to explain that to you quickly. Let me open this up. Okay, now sometimes this weird little thing happens where you do open a program and you only get the front panel. If so, for that program, because this is the Sumo 2 program and I don't see the block diagram, if so you could just go show block diagram and there we go, it pops up. I'm going to maximize the screen for that and let me explain basically what's going on here. First off, I've got two loops. I've got the master loop on the outside here. What is a loop? A loop will run any series of instructions that you give it. It will run it eternally until you power off the robot. So within this loop, I put another loop, meaning I want this loop to run continuously and I'm going to add other loops in here as well. So there'll be two or three loops in, within this master loop. Uh, so the master loop kind of forces the other loops to keep um, running sequentially again and again. Now within the loop, within this uh, sub loop if you will, I have a variety of icons that need to be executed. Once they're executed, they start over, back over here at the beginning. So let's run through the program quickly First off, I've got uh, two motors, motor A and B. They are both operating at power level 75. As soon as I turn on the robot, the robot starts to move forward with port A and B on at level 75. The program now moves forward and it is now inside the loop. So this command only gets executed once. It moves inside the loop and then moves into this loop and it gets that instruction again. I'll explain to you in a minute why I put this a second time but anyways we have motor A and B and it is at power level 75 even though I didn't put a modifier on there to specify it like I did over here by default they're at power level 75. 
So now the EV3 brick can go to the next programming command along the, this wire and it sees, okay, look on the light sensor. If you see light that is less than 25, I added this modifier in, then that means I must have hit a black line. When it sees darkness below level 25, it then says, okay, I see it, move on to the next command, and the next command is forward motor A at 35, uh, plus 35 power level, which is forward, and negative 75 for port B, which makes port B reverse. So now the robot is turning. Okay, it executes that command, goes on to the next block. How long do you want it to turn? So the program just sits here. As it's turning, it sits here for how long? This says wait for two seconds before you go to the next command. So it will continue to turn and while it's turning it waits for two seconds so it'll actually be turning for two seconds then it jumps back over to the start the beginning of this program and it gets motor A and B as a command to go forward once again that's why I put this back here because remember uh, you can't jump outside of the loop back to this command so I needed to have that instruction uh, reinserted So how do I actually place these icons and get them and add all these modifiers? Let me give you a quick demo on that now. So I'm going to go to the programming set and I'm going to go to structures and I'm going to grab a while loop. Just click once and then come in here and I will drop that box there. Next I'm going to go back up into programming actually back into the Mindstorms, the main menu and this time I'm going to go to the input output and I'm gonna grab a motor and drop that motor in there okay I'm gonna go to the top center of this icon and I'm gonna right click on a Mac you hold your control key and you click and on a PC you just right click on your mouse and I'm gonna go to the option create constant and the create constant is going to open up this window which will allow me to a pull down window which will allow me to select which port the motor is connected to I'm gonna choose port A but let's say I want to add a second motor. Well, I don't have to go through this whole process again. I just have to click on this down button over here, and a second window pops up, and I could put port B. There, now I have two motors that are activated. A little circuit. Next I'm going to add a sensor. Now over here I put a, uh, a light sensor. So just to show you how I did that I grabbed a wait for command and then let me choose my hand tool. I'm going to click on this pull down menu on the wait for. Wait for what? Right now it's set to time by default. I'm going to click on this and say EV3 color. Now you could look for a specific color or you could say the reflected light when it is less. This is what I'm looking for. If it hits a black line, the light will be less. The light that's being reflected from the light sensor back up into the sensor itself will be less than, less than what? Well, let's specify that now. now I'm going to right click on the lower left of this icon and choose create constant. And right now it's set to 30. Let me move this down here so it's out of the way. I'm going to choose my type tool, text tool, and I'm going to go into this box. I'm going to change that 30, let's say, to 25 like we did earlier. There we go. And then I can get the uh, some motors out again. So I'm going to grab my motors and I'm going to go up to the top center, right click, choose create constant, and it's going to have, let me choose the hand tool now, I'm going to put it on port A and I'm going to add a second motor which will be port B 
as we did before. Let me move this icon out of the way. See, this is where space becomes important. I can move this one down here as well. And I'm going to set the power level here. I wanted it to turn, so I'm going to go create constant. And I'm going to move this down here. Double click inside there, or actually take my text tool. And I'm going to put the first icon at minus 35. Or sorry, no, I had it at positive, right? At, at positive 35. And then I could either just leave it like that, or I could right click on this, go create constant, and put it at minus 75. OK. and so you would invert your turning from what you had up here. So that's basically how you would wire all those icons and finally let me just from up here I'm going to wire this entire thing so that it is part of the circuit. Now one last thing that I need to do is to add the end command. You'll notice that there's a broken arrow up here for my list errors and that's because I did not end the loop. The loop needs to know when when do I terminate. And you notice up here I had put the end button and all that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to the complete menu and go to sensors and grab this one here. Read brick buttons. Drop that over here. If you bring it close enough it wires automatically. See the green wire? Wired automatically. And then I need to right click on the lower left, choose create constant, and switch this, choose my hand tool, switch it. I keep it on enter button, that's it. Notice that our arrow is no longer broken up here. If you hit this, it will run the program. If you want it to load directly to the EV3, just go to file and choose target to EV3. Right now I don't have an EV3 plugged in so it won't find one, but that's what you would switch it to and then you could hit this to uh, deploy the program or hit the arrow key to, to actually upload it onto the robot and uh, then you can unplug your robot hit enter and it would run the program. Now your challenge is going to be to create some other loops. Right now I have a navigation loop in here. Let's say I wanted to change this from navigation to a situation where it was uh, an attack arm. What I could do is quickly here switch the switch the light sensor to let's say an ultrasonic EV3 ultrasonic and I'm waiting for an object that's closer in centimeters well how much closer right now it's set to 25 maybe I wanna wait till it's about let's say seven centimeters close because the navigation is on port 2 the light sensor I could leave this one on port 1 so this is a different sensor it's plugged into port 1 and what do I want it to do well in this case I, I'm only gonna need one uh, motor to activate here so I'm gonna click this up button and basically that'll delete one of the motors and get rid of this if I do command B it gets rid of ba all bad wires and right now if it sees an object closer than seven centimeters 
this motor will activate uh, at 35 power? No, at 100 power. Maybe it's a hammer, maybe it's a shovel that lifts up and flips the robot. So here we'll put 100 power and that motor is connected to port C because we've already used port A and B up here. So this one's on port C. And I want it to flip for how long? For two seconds. Then after it's flipped its object, you're probably going to want the motor to come back down to the floor. So you could go back to your input output commands and in this case right click on the center and we can again port C let's say minus 100 so I'll right click on the lower left here create constant minus 100 and uh, probably one second would be enough here we go so it does that for one second Let's wire all of that up. There we go. So now what happens? Okay, so the robot's moving forward. Then it sees another robot closer than five, uh, seven centimeters. It activates its shovel, lifts and flips the other robot. For how long? For two seconds it's, it's lifting to tip the robot. And then after two seconds, the robot starts to go minus 100, meaning it comes back down, the shovel comes back down, probably takes about one second to come back down, program starts over. So you've now got two sensors. You've got a light sensor watching out for the black line, and you've got an ultrasonic sensor watching out for how close another robot comes. And all of this is two loops within one giant loop. Hit deploy and you're ready to go.